Hello, everyone. I must welcome you all to our webinar series, Future You Set Your Career Compass Right with Experts Insight. And I'm Kalyani Majumdar, your host for today's webinar. So in today's session, our topic is careers in management consulting. And so in this webinar, we will be talking about what is the career progression in, uh, in management consulting? What are the various job opportunities available? What is it like to work for the big three? the key skills that are required to excel as a management consultant and more. And to answer these, we have our speaker today, Akshay Ayer. He's a consultant with uh, Bain and Company. Akshay is an alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad. Prior to Bain and Company, Akshay worked with Credit Suisse as an investment banking analyst. And before pursuing an MBA, he worked with Reliance and Deloitte for three plus years. So welcome, Akshay Ayer, and thank you so much for being here today for this session. Thank you. Look forward to talking to you guys. Yeah. So let's uh, let's start with your uh, career trajectory. So can you take us through uh, what uh, from right from your Institute of Chartered Accountant of India days to I am Ahmedabad, and what made you decide to go for uh, MBA and then uh, management consulting? Yeah. 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 So yeah. So I I was doing. Uh, CA along with BCom uh, back then. And while doing my articleship, which is a three year mandatory period, mm. uh, I kind of realized that that's not what I want to do in terms of the kind of work that we do as CAs. Yeah. Um, so I just decided to finish what I was doing mm. and then look for, for something else. And I thought that an MBA would be a best route to kind of uh, redirect uh, and, and you know change course and mm. figure out what I want to do. Right. Um, also, because this course and MBA, especially if you do it from the IIMs, where you know you're not literally choosing which specialization you want right at the start, mm. uh, gives you a lot of options. That mm. you can you can actually even take some time through the first year to figure out what you want, try something out in your summer internship, change that in the finals, and go to something different again. Mm. Right. Um, mm. So it gives you a lot of opportunity to really experiment, figure out what you want to do and stuff. So that's what attracted me towards that. Um, and consulting has always been. Uh, an interest in the back of my mind because just the, the array of problems that you deal with, uh, the, the diversity involved in it, right, is 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 immense. And, and even a few years of experience there can get you a kind of a knowledge base that very few other, uh, you know, paths can provide to you. So so that's how I reached there. Um, I did have an investment banking stint in the middle. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so again, just because of my background, which just puts me in a good place uh, to kind of uh, deliver well and perform well in such kind of roles, I thought, let's give it a shot and see. Okay. Um, but I kind of realized that uh, finance, I mean, it, it's a core finance sort of a role, right? And and heavily based on valuations and stuff, yeah. uh, which was fun for me, but I kind of felt that I'm still missing something, which is, you know, like an overall bird's eye view of how organizations work. Uh, that's when I decided that let's, let's try out consulting. So... Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how different? Uh, uh, you you worked with Reliance. You worked with Deloitte before pursuing an MBA. So, yeah. what exactly were you doing there? And uh, was there uh, any of these uh, things that you did there? Was that also a trigger, or was it just that you wanted to get out of uh, finance and get more and more into uh, uh, something like more on the business aspect? Yeah, at Deloitte, I was a part of the audit team. Uh, okay. So that just made it very clear to me that yeah. the thing is you try it and you figure out right whether you like it or you don't. So yeah. so that I was clear that I didn't want to do it. Mm. Uh, as a part of Reliance, I, I did join their uh, management training program. That's like you do different stints uh, across different departments and then they kind of train you to be a, a future uh, leader sort of a thing. Okay. That kind of interested me uh, mm. because because I saw that like I'm seeing different aspects of an organization and uh, you know like there's a certain path that you have uh, mm. in your career. So that kind of made me realize like you know what like this should could be interesting um and then what i saw with post mba folks like that's the kind of route primarily even if you join a company that you take right you enter somewhere in the mid level and then you kind of scale up mm-hmm. um so those experiences definitely did shape uh in terms of uh, how i thought about next steps okay so uh, since you've been so much uh, okay we'll we'll first cover ground on uh, you know how exactly uh, you know, you were so steeped in finance and then, you know, you moved to consulting. Yeah. So obviously, you know, transition is possible. But uh, what if, you know, someone, you know, he, uh, has uh, completed an MBA and has still been in finance and then, you know, for maybe for two or three years and then, you know, would like to uh, move to consulting. Does mm. that work? 
or uh, and and also can somebody who has been in consulting can they move back to finance or one of these like or marketing or another specialization is that possible so if you've already finished your mba right and then you let's say you work in in finance for like a couple of years or so you can still move to consulting uh, but obviously you lose all your tenure right like you will not the the two three years that you spent in finance post mba especially yeah. will not be recognized as uh, tenure for consulting because it's a completely different skill set mm-hmm. right so if you're okay to start from scratch then that option remains right um but the reverse is a little difficult uh, i mean I, leaving the co- yeah from from consulting to yeah. core finance oh. and when i say core finance i'm referring to your corporate finance and investment banking and those right. kind of yeah. roles yes. not private equity or venture capital so if you talk about those roles that can be slightly tricky in the first year you can still do it because you are still considered like a fresh grad and it doesn't really matter um but after that it's it's kind of tricky because that because they typically hire in small numbers right we also need to look at those kind of dynamics let like these banks hire like one two three people a year hmm. so uh, naturally they they get those people from campus and and that's how it works yeah okay so uh, uh, as far as uh, you were working as an investment banking analyst so was that uh, a very stressful work as in, uh, how how um, stressful is that uh, as compared to uh, being a consultant with bain and company and we'll then come to what it is all about working with the big three yeah yeah it it definitely was a bit more hectic uh, to be honest i think both both jobs are on on weekdays both jobs are equally hectic uh, okay. they do require long hours you you do burn the midnight oil uh, mm-hmm. on a regular basis yeah. uh, right it's just the demand of a job uh, because both are client facing roles yeah. uh, with with kind of tight uh, timelines involved especially if like you have projects or deals to be completed mm-hmm. uh, within a certain time so so that's that what is different um, and again i can speak more about bain yeah. um uh, what's different here is we do have majority of our weekends off which for me makes a huge huge difference uh, to have oh, a couple yeah. of days yeah. and here Can yes and to interact with people who <laughs> yeah. are interested in this so uh, yeah, yeah yeah it gives me some time to do whatever else i want in life yeah. uh, beyond work and i think that that's a very very huge difference even though if, if it's just like a couple of days uh, mathematically you might think that you know how does it matter and stuff but yeah. uh, i think it makes a very big difference in terms of uh sustaining a lifestyle right which if you wanted to year in year out um and not just like an internship or something i think it it definitely helps correct okay so uh so yeah let's uh talk about you know uh, what are the functions of a management consultant like you know very and what are the job duties and maybe you know you can actually start talking about you know how is your life uh at bain as in you know your day uh, how a, a typical day looks like at bain mm. as a consultant mm. yeah Sure. So I'll I'll cover the first part, which is like right. what kind of work we do here, right? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I think it can be extremely, extremely diverse. Uh, first is the, the kind of clients that you deal with, especially if you go to one of the top few uh, companies, right? Uh, top few firms. You deal with clients across different sectors. Uh, the best part of consulting is you can you can do projects of different tenures uh, with different sectors with different kinds of companies. The problem statements can also vary. Uh, like for example, it can be. Uh, entering into a new market like a new geography or something it mm. can be creating a new product it can be enhancing your current product figuring out why it's not doing well what can you do to kind of make it better um it can be a performance improvement sort of a thing uh wherein you know you're you're figuring out that that you know i need to kind of improve the efficiency of this particular machine and that will kind of give me a certain uh, leverage sort of a thing mm. it can be cost optimization which is where you know like people in finance etc can also contribute a bit more because they get these uh, smaller nuances of it mm. um and then we also have this, the newer part here now is around um helping private equity firms not just companies okay. uh, and bain bain does a lot of that uh, okay. right now so it's basically just advising them on whom they should invest in and whom they should not mm. supporting mm. their portfolio companies and stuff uh, with their strategy initiatives so so that's broadly what we do if you want to simplify and club like things into three categories you can you can call it as uh strategy work uh implementation work mm. and uh portfolio or a private equity support like these are the three legs of consulting broadly as an industry to see at it right now okay uh let's take a few questions before we move to the next uh bit uh my uh, there's a person from hospitality graduate currently pursuing msc in hospitality administration with no work experience and looking to switch 
her career mm. from uh, to marketing or consulting what should i do now to develop my skills to be able to work in consulting got it so i'll tell you what the skill yeah. sets are required what are the kind of skill sets which we look for right uh, even when we go back to campus from right. from an mba school the yeah. kind of skill sets we look for are number one you should be very clear in terms of what the basic concepts are right like not just like it, it's across uh, spectrums like right from uh, finance to marketing to operations and stuff your basic fundas as people call it that needs to be set right that's number one mm. right second is how do you structure your thought process like are you able to break down a certain problem statement mm. in in so there's this jargon i'm going to use here you'll hear this a lot in, in terms of consulting it's called mesi framework right it's basically okay. mutually exclusive collectively exhaustive okay. uh, which is basically how you kind of break down a problem statement into multiple parts mm. analyze each of them separately figure out how you can kind of tackle each of them and then come up with an overall solution mm. right mm. so are you able to think on those lines there are ways in which we test candidates during the interviews to see if this is there or not this is the most most important part of uh, a consulting interview right and then apart from this obviously you know being able to think on your feet how you communicate this being like a client facing role Uh, mm. the way you are able to carry yourself the personality right. that you are emitting mm. right are you able to hold a simple conversation when we right. let's say you meet a client a simple 5 minute conversation even if without any meaningful subject are you able to hold that carry the discussion and stuff okay these are few skill sets that we look for so uh, okay so soft skills like communication and all and presentation skills probably and what uh, hard skills mm. we don't really look for subject matter expertise because that's not that's not what we are hiring people for uh as consultants we do have access to a lot of material a lot of uh, experts advisors in the industry and stuff so if yes. you don't know something subject matter wise you learn it right you pick it up you read stuff you pick it up and 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 you move on from there but okay. what's more important is how do you use the resources that you have how do you interpret it how do you come up with certain logical solutions or ways to rationalize the problem right which is the which is the mc framework i was talking about that is the most important part yeah. uh, of a consultant's work hmm. so uh, okay so this bit brings me to the to my next question and that is about uh, everybody is talking about business analytics now and hmm. a lot of people also think that uh, a good business analytics uh, course can uh kind of make you uh a uh, you know someone you know who brings business solutions on the table right mm -hmm. with data so now the thing is uh, a lot of people think that uh can management consulting uh, can a management consultant be replaced by a business analyst uh and and also um like mckinsey has knowledge centers and uh, i believe bain and company has one as well yeah 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 so uh, those people are basically you know data science guys mm, but mm. is like do you think you know uh, maybe in the long run uh, management consultant might be replaced by a business analyst i i don't think so i think i think in fact it helps consultants a lot okay. to have these kind of things which is why you'll see mckinsey bain bcg all yeah. three of them have their an, an uh, analytics arm yeah. right and this arm is not replacing us or uh, you know like taking away the work that we did in fact it's kind of helping us leverage the data with which mm -hmm. clients provide and get us insights which we did not uh, you know think we can get because doing those complex modeling exercises and stuff mm -hmm. let's be honest right like that's not our forte as consultants mm -hmm. that's not why we are there in the firm we are not there to analyze data right we are there to use the data to use the resources to use whatever uh, we have around us mm. understand what the core issue is figure out what options we have to kind of tackle those issues and and come up with a recommendation right none of these things can be done purely based on analytics okay. your ability to still break down things your ability to interpret what you can do your ability to and let let's get this thing very clear right in terms of um in consulting you are not working alone right you yeah. are working with your client uh, so many a times you got a tag team with them and interface with them brainstorm with them with their team figure out what's the best way forward and stuff right so there's a lot of that involved which which again pure play analytics on its own can't really replace okay so i do think yeah net net there are a bunch of skill sets which uh, you will continue to bring to the table as a consultant okay. um analytics obviously helps you uh, it 
like even if let's say you've done a crash course or something uh, before mba or like you just do that on the background right you will still have a team obviously uh, to do it for you but you will be well placed to understand what you can do so what can the team help you with uh, and you know this is the best way in which i can leverage the work that they do for us yeah mm-hmm. that's that's one way but i i don't think we need to worry at, at least at the moment about uh, being replaced by that yeah. okay yeah uh, so let's uh, talk about your um, how uh, your your journey to bain uh, so how exactly uh, can you tell us a little bit briefly about you know uh, how the selection process was and the kind of interviews if you remember the kind of questions that were yeah. asked yeah 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 so so in bain and in all consulting firms this is pretty yeah. common um so the way we do it let's first focus on the big three then you can sure. talk about uh, both the four and yeah, yeah. three yeah. perfect perfect so so for the big three uh, usually the interviews are focused around two things okay. number one is it's going to be like a a case a case interview yeah. right wherein we give you like a a mock situation like let's say i'll just say that you know like let's imagine your client is a is a, a a coffee distributor in in USA and they're planning to enter into India for example okay how would you go about it sort of a thing okay that's it i, I just give you this much information now it's up to you to kind of ask me the right questions that you need to kind of get to a final recommendation right so i'm evaluating you basically on um what kind of questions you're asking are you covering all the bases are you um how are you breaking things down mm-hmm. and what kind of recommendations are you giving are you thinking through comprehensively to consider all the factors which are involved in this expansion of a market uh, for for someone right so yeah so i think so and there are ways in which you typically do this there are a bunch of case books etc that also provide uh, these details if you go to a b school especially i can uh, i can speak about the iims they they do provide uh, enough material for you to prepare for these interviews okay. and these will last these cases typically last for like 20 to 30 minutes odd okay uh, right uh, and just this part i'm just talking about just this part of the case interview. how did you prepare for these uh, for the case study or there are a bunch of case books uh, which you get like each institute also publishes its own case book okay. each year mm-hmm. um, so you the moment you enter there you get access to all the all the material so yes. then like like once you're in you're sorted like that's you, know, you don't need to worry about that mm-hmm. um so this is what the most important part of an interview like 90% of your of the decision that happens in terms of whether you go to the next round or not is how you perform on this particular kind of interview okay. right and then the remaining part is obviously uh, we try to understand the personality uh, and the softer aspects of it uh, like like we mentioned before because it's an important part of a client role mm-hmm. right so we try to gauge that we try to understand why someone wants to do consulting because uh, i mean let me be honest here right like it it is a demanding role uh the workers are quite bad right so if someone's not motivated enough there's no point for anyone to have them on right so so we're very particular about the kind of people we look uh, we look at like the desire to work hard the desire to learn because this particular field unless you're really interested and you want to get into the details um you will not enjoy you will not be able to kind of like do justice uh, to the role so we try to gauge that as as the remaining 10% so uh yeah so uh, what were the questions like so uh in terms of the software aspect you say yeah it's it's more like why do you want to do consulting uh, uh, yeah. the standard ones why do you want to do standard. consulting um why would you want to enter xyz firm uh and why not the others you know mm-hmm. those the, those kind of basic questions so uh are you saying like a, a case study is for all interviews for consulting all consulting interviews uh, have got case study or is it only for big 3 or for the fours and all of them have it all of them have it the the number of rounds differ hmm. uh, across firms right like that depends from firm to firm as to how many rounds they want to take but typically you will find 3 to 5 rounds uh, okay. being taken um and if like it's it's lower on campus because you are like looking for a lot of people and you know like like you're like rushing to get people and 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 okay. those things so you'll probably have like three four rounds of sorts okay but if you go laterally then like you have all the time in the world right like to okay. interview someone and really yeah. uh check sort of a thing so laterally you will have around four five six rounds okay so so like the best route a lot of people ask me this question the best route to get to a consulting firm is through campus fresh out of campus okay okay so uh can you tell us about the career progression from entry level to senior level as a consultant sure. yeah 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 so uh, maybe uh, do you think you know is this uh, industry agnostic or is it differing from one to the other uh, it is it is somewhat so, similar for the big 3 uh, 
uh, again it differs for the the other ones but yeah. i can speak for the big 3 yeah. um yeah. For, so here again i'm i'm talking about a post mba grad right yeah. uh, for a for a post mba grad the path to partner is around 11 12 years or okay. typically typically right um it, it's it's like you start as a and and the, the the jargons used are different right at each firm but let me speak about bain like at bain you start as a junior consultant in the first two years right okay. and then you are a consultant for the next uh two to three years odd okay. and then you play like the manager's role uh for uh, another two three years mm. and then you play the principal's role or they call associate partner just one level before the partner for a few more years okay and then you make partner right now each of these in consulting uh is an up or out sort of a policy uh wherein if you perform only then you get promoted if you do not perform to the level at which they want you to get uh, to perform mm. then you know like they'll give you another chance they'll probably tell you that you know what like you're not there yet like why don't you take a few more months and stuff and if it's still not happening then there are ways in which they tell you that you buddy you need to find something else right so it is it is kind of cut short um, yeah. Yeah. so so i won't sugar coat things it is quite cut short but yeah. if you are doing well like i said if you are motivated if you are doing well you can make partner very fast like imagine yourself entering a consulting firm at like 25 26 27 28 28 post b school right before yeah. 40 yeah. you can make partner uh, in these firms so okay. that's how quick it is in terms of the trajectory okay uh, is it true that uh, being a consultant you you have to be ready to live out from your suitcase is it true like to live out <laughs> live with your bag and you know you just have to travel all the time constantly uh, of course you know barring the pandemic now of course yeah because otherwise <laughs> is it true One uh pretty much ready? pretty much true yeah okay. yeah pretty much it's i think it also depends on uh, a bit of luck because okay. uh, see you'll choose a base location right like one yeah. of the metro cities where these consulting companies yeah. have offices yeah. Yeah. if your client is in the same location then you're lucky you know. uh, but otherwise uh, you do end up meeting a truckload of people in the airport monday mornings and <laughs> again uh, yeah. at the end yeah. of the week yeah. so yeah what about you uh are you traveling a lot or no much yeah i've had a mix i've had a mix uh okay. yeah and i personally do enjoy traveling um and i feel that the the, the kind of travel that we have at least again in the in the big 3 mm-hmm. is is not too bad because we do come back home on weekends and stuff so right. we fly on like monday and come back on thursday or friday so my weekends are not affected uh by you know like this sort of a travel and stuff like it's it's obviously difficult in the sense that you like this outside food and there's like a different lifestyle involved in this so right. it's not like the most healthiest of of things mm. uh but if you enjoy travel if you and, and meeting people and all those things then like you'll it, it's actually a driving force for a lot of people who join like the first 2 3 years mm. people do enjoy and they want to travel and stuff because there are a lot of perks to it right like you again in the in the, in the big three you get to like stay in five star hotels and the, the kind yeah. of restaurants you go to with your team with the clients and stuff right. is like yeah. the fancy on the fancier side and stuff so it is it is pretty lucrative as a value proposition so uh, uh, so being a consultant uh, for someone to think of taking a career as a consultant uh, one should be extrovert isn't it i mean you don't need to be an extrovert extrovert as such or you uh, can ambivert for that matter but not yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhat it's at least yeah. on the fence if you yeah. are completely yeah. an introvert then mm. it it can be slightly tricky to have those conversations with the clients yeah. beyond yeah. just um, yeah. you know like um, that but having said that i think In good, yeah no quick repo because you know obviously Correct. you don't get much time anyway so. you don't you don't you you, yeah. it's, you have it's, to build the yeah. repo right there <laughs> so yeah exactly yeah but but having said that i think i wouldn't rule out the opportunity for uh, people who are introverts also uh, because i think the first couple of years especially are uh, are years where you are more you're doing more of analysis you're doing more of like problem solving and 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 lesser client interaction right as you get more senior is when you keep doing more and more of client interaction so i think if you are someone who uh who's more on the introvert side uh and you know you still want to learn what's happening here and stuff it's not a bad place you can still do it for a couple of years and figure out right like if you still see that you're uncomfortable talking to people then yes you should look for something different right. but many a times i have actually seen a lot of people even a couple of my juniors who were people who did not talk much didn't open up much yeah. but just looking at 
the the vibrancy around you like again just imagine yourself being in a company filled with people from top p schools and um, uh, like equally driven like everyone's raging to kind of do better and stuff correct the environment makes you con- like makes it conducive to for you to try things out right you will feel like putting yourself out of your comfort zone seeing how you feel and stuff yeah. so it it's i would not i would say it's definitely worth experimenting and seeing if you if you like it or not okay let's take few questions now uh what kind of crash courses are better to do before mba pro, uh, before mba uh i i would say uh, uh, maybe really, you know, uh, maybe you can say uh maybe um what kind of is there anything one can do right now as in you know our mba aspirants like maybe you know certification courses or something to uh build their profile basically so yeah we can talk about the profile building bit as well now so uh what what all can they do now uh before you know they clear cat and before they yeah get into a b school yeah so maybe what i'll do is i'll just let me cover the uh, profile bit right like yes, what do we yeah. look for in a yeah. profile and probably that yeah. might just help yes. in terms of yeah. uh, <clears throat> next steps mm-hmm. so look we the way we look at a profile we divide it into three parts okay the, the number one is academics okay uh, number two is your uh, professional experience mm-hmm. and number three is your extra curricular activities and positions of responsibilities and stuff that you have mm-hmm. right so these are three broad buckets mm-hmm. now in order to get even a short list or even be interviewed by the big 3 mm-hmm. you need uh you need to be extremely good in two out of three at least okay. out of these things we call it spikes which basically means that two out of these three really outshine like you're excellent in, in two of these things okay. uh now academics can simply be you've done really well in undergrad or you've done some uh, you've got a rank or, or you know like you uh you've been a part of the top few in your institute and stuff uh yeah. that's academics right yeah. or you of let's say you've done a cfa level 3 or like no, you know you yeah. you've done some a bunch of other things there that's academics um in terms of professional experience it could be the 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 richness of the experience that you have and when i say richness it's basically not just the tenure right it's more than tenure uh it's the kind of work that you've done there the responsibilities that you've had mm-hmm. um let's say you've managed people you've had people under you uh yeah. that shows that you've kind of reached somewhere let's say you got a fast track promotion Mm-hmm. or or you got some kind of an award for what the kind of work you've done okay um or or let's say you, the work you've done is extremely relevant let's say you drove uh, an initiative in an organization to get to something right okay. so that's the work ex part of it mm-hmm. right then the third part on extra correction pos i think it a lot of it is stems from your undergrad experience right. if not from your undergrad then you would have uh, like participated in competitions debates uh or let's say road track or any of those kind of ngo activities uh or anything like that mm-hmm. so or like let's say organize a fest or something you know like an event uh, or or something so those are few things now what you can do is again dependent on how long you have before mm-hmm. you are actually going to be school right if you're planning for this year mm-hmm. then it, it's it's reasonably limited right like uh, amount of time that you have to kind yeah. of do something right now but if you are planning for a year after or something then you can actually aim for like a fast track promotion at work you can academics i mean it is is there obviously you can do like a side course or something but it i don't think if you have a good profile already it's not going to change too much mm-hmm. on that front mm-hmm. so yeah at work you can do you can aim for a, a promotion or or aim to kind of do some work which you think you'll be able to you know explain well as right. to how impactful it was right. um or you can pick up some positions of responsibilities with with uh, ngos or um if you are still in college then pick something up like be the head of a fest or or a head of a economics club mm-hmm. or anything like that which basically either conveys leadership skills mm-hmm. or it conveys the 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 quality that you can get things done right because at the end of the day that's what we look for can you get things done for us so these are few aspects yeah okay how how did you convince uh, your uh, even during your interview how did you convince uh, after having after being steeped in finance yeah you know you are ready for consulting how did you convince them okay. yeah so i was pretty candid with them because they also knew that i'm kind of leaving a <clears throat> a role which is like equally good on a, although on a different yes. uh, front right okay. so my reasons were honestly very clear and i'll probably say that maybe so that you know people here yeah. uh, get a sense of how things how these things work so 
investment banking like i said is a finance focused role uh, you do get access to multiple sectors even there right you do meet different companies you do there's a softer aspect is also there but that role is a bit more focused on valuations uh, it's more you will talk to companies and figure out what the business plan etc is but you'll take that you'll you'll like make fancy materials out of it and pitch it to investors right like let's say your company wants to do an ipo you'll kind of do those kind of things so how do you make a company look attractive right yeah. like that's the that's the whole uh, mm. thesis there mm. Mm. but over there i did not really get the nuances around let's say you know like the client is telling me like i'm going to open like 10 new stores of of this thing and we're going to grow 10% i'll be like okay cool like you'll grow 10% 10 new stores adding it here okay i never really got a chance to ask them like why 10 boss like why not more or like yes. why in these places or why are you thinking about it in this way how are you going to do it is there any other way to do this like is why didn't you think about this particular strategy mm. sort of a thing mm. right so so the reasoning as to why these companies are doing what they're doing is something which you don't have access to as a part of that particular field and which is what exactly you do over here oh. uh, in in consulting so mm. and that's where my interest as i did more work there uh, i figured that this is where oh, unless you work for a boutique or... investment bank investment firm maybe you know then you can still have some you know understanding of it no like you can still do some amount of it size, yeah you can do some amount of it but uh, just the amount of work which uh-huh. is done in in banking yeah. like your the amount of work that you're doing then the speed at which you need to churn things out right you don't really have the time to sit and read every single thing that's there like you'll read a bunch of research reports right hmm. uh, but you'll just pick things up put things there package it and then move forward which is completely fine because the objective there is valuation and it's it's to kind of get that money raised or get the merger completed right, right. Yeah. over here over here the whole in consulting the whole value proposition in itself is promising a company that we will tell you how you need, you, you should go about things right. or we will tell you whether you're doing the right thing we will tell you whether you know this makes sense or not and in order for me to tell a particular company if yeah. they they are doing the right thing for themselves yeah. the amount i need to read the amount i need to internalize i need to kind of get my head around things is a lot right so the depth that you get into uh when you kind of read these things before telling your company what they should be doing themselves yeah. is is a lot right so if you are again interested and curious about how things work and and the why aspect mm. about things um then consulting is a very good place to be and this is exactly what i told them in a shorter way basically right. okay 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 let's take some more questions uh there are quite a few i'll uh i will graduate bba finance next year according to you what is the best postgraduate course to pursue or rather maybe in mba for so consulting uh, i think it's an mba uh, because like again i i'll just tell you about the big 3 uh, yes. we hire only from the top few iims from yes. sb and yeah. and a few ivy league schools okay uh, right and uh, from and from select few iits delhi and bombay and uh, those things okay um and, and i think a couple of delhi university uh, colleges that's it like they we're extremely particular about the the institutes from which we pick people up so mm-hmm. uh, whether you come laterally or you come to college right mm-hmm. so if you want to get into one of these few campuses uh, in these few firms mm-hmm. the campus that you go to is going to be extremely extremely important uh, as superficial as it sounds okay okay uh, is there any uh, criteria like any prior experience of work to even sit for the consulting interviews no we are happy to take freshers also like complete freshers who have not worked at all before we are happy to take them okay but how do they show that you know they have the wise and the curious bit i mean how do they prove in the interview that you know okay yes i am right for the job so so there in in such cases uh, you will see the professional experience being missing right like you won't yeah. see any uh, that aspect being on on the cv but the case What, study interview will be there anyway exactly right? so exactly yeah, so, so firstly to get yeah. shortlisted yeah. for such people who are freshers right they need to have an excellent academic record right. which shows that you know there is that effort is seen and the, and the, and and you are like intellectually strong right yeah. and then the pors and the leadership skills which is again needed for your second spike like i had mentioned to get a shortlist shows yeah. that you can get things done even if at a college level so it's right and then the case interview which i spoke about which i said like i said happens in every round mm. right there we can very quickly within 5 minutes also gauge whether you are able to think the way we want you to think okay okay uh okay uh, what kind of people should do consulting you've already kind of covered it can a mba finance fresher get into consulting uh, which type of consulting is good for them where does 
where do they go or where can uh, you go? Hmm. yeah i mean where can you go those are always open right like it it really differs uh, it differs but typically what i've seen is people who focus mainly on like if you're doing specialization in finance then uh, either you, if you join the big 3 then you know you t- tend to work more in the fs vertical the financial services vertical yeah. where we do uh, those kind of clients or we do like cases more around that that aspect mm-hmm. or there are a bunch of uh, consulting firms which are focused on on financial services related cases right like they do only that kind of work sort so that's where more of such folks go but but that doesn't mean like the doors are closed or something like i said it it really just depends on which institute you're doing it from um what's your experience so far you know what you bring to the table and and stuff okay oh, what is the major difference between uh, being a consultant and the big 3 and the big 4s yeah so look uh, historically the big 4s have been accounting firms right like they've uh, like big 4s hasn't like deloitte pwc by kpmg these guys have focused more on audit tax um uh, those kind of services they later got into risk advisory and uh, into financial diligence and those kind of things okay. now they're slowly trying to get into consulting uh, the regular consulting cases okay. that's been their journey so far yeah. right for a, for the, the big 3 which is uh, mckinsey bain and bcg uh, these firms have been through and through strategy consulting firms right from the time they started off oh. right um, so now from an industry's point of view when when clients look at this um, they look at the big 3 as the most experienced Okay. so you'll see the the biggest of companies or the most popular ones etc who can afford these firms right like these firms do come at a very very heavy cost mm-hmm. so you'll see all the all the, the cream clients with these three firms mm-hmm. then the ones who you know uh, are at tier tier 2 kind of firms mm-hmm. or who want such kind of similar services but can't afford these but still want a good brand mm-hmm. right now let's let's be uh, honest like again the the brand of the company giving you consulting is is also pretty important because you're essentially saying look bain told me to do this yeah. or look deloitte told me to do this uh-huh. right so 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 big fours have that brand which help them kind of enter this and and so they they like the after the big 3 they're the next few kind of, uh, ones that uh, kind of do this mm-hmm. but having said that i think there's also a mid layer between the big 3 and the big fours right yeah. uh um, there are a bunch of these firms like alvarez marshall oliver wyman strategy and mm-hmm. uh, and and so on right these are firms which are international consulting firms uh, not really tagged as any particular thing at kearney yeah. was another one yeah. yeah yeah so these so the way i would put it in the pecking order is you have the big 3 and then you have yeah, your atk oliver wyman alvarez marshall uh, strategy and and stuff and then you have the big four that's how the industry is kind of stacked at the moment right now okay okay uh, uh i have worked in tax consultancy for 3 years i wanted to know what sort of clients do you serve and whom do you provide advice to maybe the cfo or ceo or what are your service delivery deliverables and to whom do you provide advice yeah right this would differ from company yeah. to company um usually the the key stakeholders and again it depends on the size of the company right like if you're talking about a fortune 500 company yeah. then typically it'll be the head of strategy or the coo or or something like that um cfo is involved if if there's like a finance angle let's say it's a cost optimization program or something mm-hmm. or you're helping them with a budgetary exercise or to do something like that they'll be involved let's say you're helping them with a, a supply chain optimization sort of a thing right then you'll have the head of manufacturing uh and and supply chain head and those kind of folks involved if mm-hmm. you're looking at an organization wide thing right let's say like, like in terms of really um overhauling the way in which it is structured or restructuring an organization and those kind of things you'll find find the ceo to be involved mm-hmm. in in that directly if you're doing like a uh org restructure or or an hr kind of a thing you'll see the hr head being involved right so yeah net net what i'm trying to say is the key stakeholders here will be the head of the department that is really getting your service directly that that person will be the key stakeholder along with the other uh, c suite employees which is your ceo and cfo and stuff kind of the ceo they they'll be kind of there in the room mm. uh, to you know like see whether it kind of makes sense as a to the company as a whole mm. to do that but that's at the highest level right mm. you as a as, like at the lowest level Uh, on a day to day basis will obviously deal with people within their teams right now they can that seniority there can differ based on what the problem statement is what you need from them like 
you won't go to a cfo for a data request right you'll go to probably the the, the accountant uh, over yeah. there and get that right. but if you are discussing your hypothesis on like look this is how i'm thinking about these things what do you think about it mm. you won't go to that accountant you'll probably go right. to his boss or the boss of that boss mm. right so that's how it works mm. okay uh, i'm appearing for interviews of four old iims this year anything i can do after interviews in the meantime before joining the b school to improve my profile or skill set regarding consulting not really i i i don't think there's much to do what you can do is uh, if you want to just understand how these case studies are done right uh, there is this guy called victor cheng uh, v i c t o r c h e n g he makes a lot of videos uh, on like how what typ- typically consulting cases work and stuff very very basics like one on one sorts that's not how the case is going to be asked at all but like it just gives you a overview of how to kind of think through a basic problem statement right so that's something which a lot of people did watch during my time and and even now i see we just go through that stuff so you can do that okay. but apart from that i think once you join you get all the resources and stuff and and what happens on campus is uh, you practice with your friends right so it's a group activity that happens together so i don't think there's too much to worry okay okay uh does family business experience help to get shortlist as in does that add to one's profile it does it does but again it depends on what you've done there hmm. uh like what is the contribution that you have made uh to to that particular business just being a part of a big name or something that doesn't really help too much uh, your role over there or your impact uh, is what we look at and that's that we can gauge by what you write in the cv and when we talk to you right like especially in case of uh, in in situations where uh, what you do is different like a family business or let's say you worked at an ngo or you worked at a a, a non not a different sort of an organization a government entity or something we typically tend to talk to the candidates a bit more to understand what they've really done and those kind of things because it's not like a standard thing where oh i got a fast track promotion no oh, i you know i manage x y z people and stuff right? your your points are going to be different yeah. so so it's not held against the candidate uh, but definitely you might see a little bit more of questions coming your way to understand what you've done because that will also help us gauge whether you are ready or that is that really a spike mm-hmm. for you to kind of uh, you know qualify for this sort of a role okay uh what are some of the exit opportunities after 2 to 3 years of a consulting job it's it's huge actually uh where do i start like so the most popular one of late is is the startups there are a bunch of tech startups and companies which are uh, coming up of late right uh, so right from very early stage series a series b to e uh, to right for e and like even now like the the size of flipkarts and stuff mm. uh you'll see a lot of exits happening there um mm. you'll see a lot of exits happening to the industry uh, to companies like png hul micro and and those kind of companies um <clears throat> you'll find uh, and this happens across roles okay this happens as in strategy roles you'll join their strategy department you can join their growth department you can join their marketing team the product team over there uh, you can join the ceo's office uh, of of the of smaller companies and stuff um and apart from this like you also have a, a pevc route which you can take right which is a you join like private equity firms in their investment team mm-hmm. you join venture capital firms as a part of the team that evaluates whom to invest in or even whom how do you help those companies like like these venture capital firms nowadays also focus more on how do you strategically support their portfolio companies right and that's where again you come with your skill sets of helping companies out mm-hmm. so yeah it's 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 actually pretty huge uh, i know this sounds like a very vague answer but it's actually quite open uh, it you can go to any industry that you want like the field it can be right from industrial goods to healthcare to consumer to anything mm-hmm. and the kind of roles also differ right from strategy to growth to uh, marketing and stuff a core finance thing might be difficult uh, mm-hmm. like i said because like you know the skill sets that are needed there are are again slightly different but and and the core tech roles also obviously uh, a microsoft or something is is going to be difficult after consulting generalist sort of a role mm-hmm. okay for so which work ex core engineering or analytics helps in getting into big three it doesn't matter doesn't matter, doesn't matter. okay uh, can uh, arts graduate also get into consulting yeah 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 of course I, in fact uh, a couple of people from my uh, 
if my team also are from english honors and and you know those kind of uh, degrees like we have a doctor also in our in our uh, firm okay. uh, who just decided that he wants to leave uh, practice and and do management okay. so so in fact we look for diverse backgrounds uh, it is the same funda that's applied in these school selections uh, we look for people from different uh you know like backgrounds and what they've done etc because what they bring to the table again not just in the classroom but even at, uh, on the table in a consulting firm is different so in fact i'd say it's a that that it, it's a great thing if you're doing something very different okay uh are gap years a problem to get into consulting no okay. you might be asked a question as to why the gap um, happened um if you're able to have like a good answer on like justifying that gap then absolutely not Hmm. I have completed BE in 2018 and completed my MBA in 2020. Since then, I'm working in TCS as business analyst and Scrum master. Now I'm appearing for IMB and C interviews. Is it okay to go for a second MBA to get into product management or consulting? Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, what colleges do you uh, recruit from outside India? outside india it it will be one of the ivy league colleges or you have we have the other ones right like london business school in cad um and and there are a bunch of those top tier so it's we don't really have a specific list out there because uh it we're getting more and more universities which are doing well these days right? it's not just the harvard stanford and wharton anymore a bunch of these schools including berkeley stern etc are doing quite well now yeah. so uh, we're open to recruiting people even from Ah, uh, those places. Okay. Ah, uh, do old IMs offer consulting course in the second year? Ah, uh, I mean, what extra subject do I need to choose to get a chance to sit in the interview? So obviously, they are all general management, but yeah. So, ah, uh, what are the electives? Maybe one can. Take? So, you do get a uh, a bunch of electives. There is a like at uh, again, I can speak about IMA because that's what I've seen. Um, yeah. we do have a strategy course in the first year compulsory one which everyone does right so that kind of gives you some kind of exposure to what these cases are okay second year you do have a bunch of electives we do have a consulting focused course also uh, and then along with those the courses on operations on marketing and stuff are all contributing to what uh, your knowledge base is for consulting now having said that uh, we never ask a candidate which courses you took you can be someone who's taken all finance courses because you're interested in just learning about it and you could still be interested in doing consulting like it doesn't matter to us so uh, you will never see a consulting firm check which courses you've taken or ask you like why you why did you study finance if you are interested in this uh, that one yeah yeah okay if we don't have a particular priority right now regarding the type of specialization we want to do uh, what are the things uh, in particular we can do to come up and do uh, oh, Okay, we can do to take a decision. So basically, you know, he's a B Tech grad, and he just wants to know, like, uh, how to decide, like, you know, okay, I want to get into consulting. I think this is what he wants to ask. Got it. Yeah. yeah. So I think, um, firstly, sessions like these with different uh, people from different industries, I think yeah. that first helps you understand what each of these fields entail, okay. right? Uh, a lot of the in decision that we have uh, is also because we don't know. what each of these fields have uh, so i think first uh speaking to people through such forums or one on one or or however right uh reading about what the articles that they write and stuff mm-hmm. that will first give you a sense of what each of these fields entail yeah. right and then if you're still not able to figure out what you might be interested in despite that then i think it's completely fine uh in fact you'll see when you go to b school 50% of the folks uh, entering in the first year don't know what they want to do um yeah. which is why through the first year as you do a bunch of courses you figure out what your where your interest is and stuff mm-hmm. and you'll also see at least again in the top few ims you will have uh, companies come and explain what they do uh, mm-hmm. during the placement process before it all starts mm-hmm. so so that again becomes like a big eye opener for you you kind of understand where your interest lies and stuff so you'll figure it out over time even if you don't right now so i wouldn't stress too much on it okay and now the most important question ah uh, can you put some light on the salary in consulting <laughs> you will make enough money yeah <laughs> you will make enough money to do whatever you want in life um it's um le- okay let me put yeah, it this way maybe right? a ballpark number or something yeah yeah you you'll make you'll make 30 plus as a starter okay is what i can tell you uh, across firms 
across the top three at least for sure as a, as a, as a fresher as a fresher as an as someone who's just starting fresh in these firms and then it just scales up as you continue so yeah. so uh, how stressful uh, is being a consultant is it a very uh, stressful job it is it is pretty stressful again because it's just given the given the stakes involved right like the the timelines involved the amount of pressure of dealing with uh, you know top leadership folks of different companies yeah. and let's also understand that they're paying a bomb to these companies right yeah. to kind yeah. of get these things done so um, so so the they naturally want to get more things done within that certain time frame uh, from these uh, consulting yeah. firms so the t- deadlines are typically quite tight um, the people in your team your seniors your juniors everybody you will see are pretty driven like you'll see everyone like this it's a fast paced environment sort of a thing right so if you thrive in that if you like being around people who are very driven and like constantly on the go sort of a thing um then you'll love it yeah uh if you are if you are someone who's really interested in these kind of problem statements is really interested in understanding how these things work you'll automatically want to spend more time and and do those things right so it is it is pretty stressful and intense which is why i would recommend people to do it only if you want to do it or you're willing to put in that effort over there right mm. but it, but it is getting better i'd say it it is better than how it was a few years back um now like people are much more aware about uh mental health and and you know getting yeah. time off and all those things and all these firms are also trying actively to ensure like you know you minimize the weekend work um you minimize like post midnight work to the extent possible and and all those kind of things mm. so i think it's improving but you compare it to other fields leave investment banking and private equity aside this is one of the most hectic jobs you can get okay yeah uh hi i'm a final year engineering student i have been placed at zs associates as a business operations associate i plan to work for one to two years and then go ahead for a masters please guide me uh, as in uh, what should i uh, i mean uh, should i consider a general mba in india or abroad also secondly if i wish to switch to big three without a masters what should be my approach i have dis- decently good academic profile and extra curricular uh, experience in consulting club and events at college got it look the india versus abroad thing i think it largely depends on where you see yourself after your mba um because there's a bunch of financial aspects involved there right like if you're doing it abroad the amount you pay and how you recover it in india might be difficult so yeah. you might want have to spend a few years outside so i think that depends on your personal goals as to where you see yourself being yeah. um but if you're not doing an mba and if you directly want to get into a a, a top three consulting firm then it would depend a on which institution you are from Right. uh university originally right. the quality of your work ex and how relevant it is uh to what we do sort mm-hmm. of a thing right uh let's say if you work at deloitte consulting and then you want to join bain like uh, uh, you know then that still is relevant for us because you've done kind of similar work even if the university doesn't match uh exactly the way in in our uh pool of universities okay so so that that's how it works yeah Yeah. How difficult it is for uh, uh, to move from the big three to big four, or from the fours to big three? Is it very difficult to come from the four to <coughs> three club? It used to be. It used to be very difficult before. Okay. Uh, because because the big three did not hire laterally too much unless like you're you've done extremely well or something. Okay. But off late. just given the size at which uh, these firms are growing, like Bain, for example, in the last two years has grown three times. right uh, which is huge and you need people right like and you can't just get people uh, at the bottom of the pyramid from campuses to kind of support that growth you need people laterally mm-hmm. so 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 now the doors have opened we are hiring a lot from the big fours we are hiring a lot from uh, ATK Army and Strategy and and uh, Oliver etc okay. so i think those those doors are there but obviously like the threshold is there right like there's a certain threshold you'll need to meet the bar is set quite high uh so if you perform well in those roles back at your previous firm then the doors for uh the top 3 are open okay uh i am a computer science engineering fresher i started my mba prep by keeping consulting in my mind but i am planning to start my mba journey this year from a tier 2 uh dual specialization college that is in marketing and finance is there any scope for me to get into consulting in the big three 
maybe not directly through that college because we won't come to campus directly but what you can do is uh, is is join uh, one of the other consulting firms uh, get some experience there uh, get some points on your cv and then apply laterally okay uh, skills that one can develop for a better cv for consulting specifically consulting yeah it's it's basically the ones which i've already mentioned it's it's not too different actually we look for leadership skills um so if you are working currently then uh, if you are able to manage a certain team if you are able to drive your team to a result uh, or if you are at college then if you are organizing or heading specifically heading uh, departments or uh, competitions or events or anything then that is helpful okay uh kpmg assistant consultant for or new iims what should be my priority uh again i think it depends on what your goals are uh like if you are if you are you know like if you have a timeline in terms of doing an mba or you want you're okay doing it later and stuff so i don't think i can you know suggest a particular course in this but kpmg consulting is not a very bad option mm. uh so uh, yeah. i mean yeah mm. i am a electrical engineer uh 2018 pass out this year i am not going to get into any tier 1 b school but i might get into a baby i am what are my chances to get into consulting or what should can do what should, what should i do now to get into it i am really interested in consulting because of the variety of work one gets to do especially into power and energy sector for it so i think uh the in the smaller iams uh, you know like yeah, you do have IIMs, yeah. yeah yeah the newer iams you do you do have uh, you do have a few big fours that go mm. uh, you do have a few other smaller boutique consulting firms mm. you won't see the the big 3 or even the the, the next set yeah. uh, go to those firms uh, those uh, universities much so if you're okay with uh, starting out at you know a, a smaller firm um, and then like working your way up to the uh, the, the the main ones mm. then that's obviously a, a good option and also maybe you know you can check all the placement reports of all these yeah. who i am and then you know you can probably decide on your own as well like you know if, if this is the one that you want to get into or maybe you know next year again you want to prepare for cat and take it and maybe get into a tier one uh, somebody asked a very funny question did he say 13 or 30 <laughs> Thirteen. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I'm pretty sure I said three zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Why? Uh, why did you choose to work in India rather than in any of the other countries like in US or Europe and all that? Yeah, I think it's also uh, like if you're doing an MBA in India, right? Then the kind the companies that come there uh, will ninety percent be companies which give you roles in India. that you will get a few uh, roles outside but they'll be pretty limited so if you're doing an mba in india then expect that this is where you'll be at least for the initial few years now each of these consulting firms do have offices abroad uh, across the globe in fact right so you do have opportunities to move to another office once you complete a certain tenure in in each of these firms so the mobility option still remains uh, for you for me i just prefer what i'm doing right now and like i see a certain trajectory so i've just stuck around mm. I'm planning for MBA in finance. I don't have any work experience. Which kind of certificates and academic do I? What kind of certifications and academics uh, should I do uh, for MBA in finance? I think over there it depends on what your background was. If you are not from a finance background already, uh, let's say an engineer or something, then probably doing a CFA might help uh, to like boost your CV a bit more. but if if you are already like a chartered accountant or something and then doing an mba in finance then i don't see a need to do anything else mm. uh do you get to work on problems in it industry as a part of big 3 or does it fall under it consulting firms like accenture wipro and cosmos etc it's a pretty good question actually uh, the core it projects wherein you are literally implementing a certain tool or you are trying to get a certain capability installed in your systems and stuff Yeah. that will go with it focused firms like your uh, accenture oracle wipro and and those ones um consulting firms like we do we do work with a lot of uh, it firms at bain also but we work on broader strategic aspects like you know like should we offer this kind of a product or 
uh, what's the customer sentiment around this kind of a product and those those kind of things we won't enter the technical technical aspects of it key you know like i should probably code it in this particular way versus that or like install this capability inside that versus that sort mm mm-hmm. I'm currently working in Deutsche Bank as a management analyst in operations team. Will this work experience impact in getting into consulting? Yeah, of course, of course. Like it, the the brand name is good. Uh, the work that you're doing, uh, again, it depends on what the impact of the work that you're doing, right? And how you're able to communicate that. So if you're able to show that you know this is what you've done and this is the this is the outcome of what you've done, then that's that's more impactful. Okay. Um okay and now before we wrap up uh, can you uh, what are the few things that our MBA aspirants can keep in mind to prepare themselves from now? Yeah, I think uh yeah. now yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think firstly as an MBA aspirant like if uh, I think it's it's important to build like a holistic view uh in terms of your knowledge base right? So uh mm-hmm. the stuff that you're doing as a part of your interview prep which is understanding current affairs understanding what's happening around you uh, understanding why certain policy decisions are taken especially like like the new budget like say for example that came in or or the rbi moving around its rates and stuff understanding why those things happen uh, is pretty important and and the reason is because when you're dealing with clients and stuff uh, you do get a sense of how those how they're thinking about things and what the thought process is right so i think that's number one just keep yourself as aware as you can and that also helps you in terms of the smaller conversations that you have uh with your interview panel or with people outside right. um that's number one mm. number two i would say is whenever the next time you are thinking about how you solve a problem um be it a case study be it a, you know like a broader uh, issue that you see like in a, uh, an illustration or something mm. see if you can if you can kind of structure your thoughts into like you know let me break this down there there are five aspects to this whole situation and let me cater to each of these aspects one by one independently okay thoughts right mm. see if you're able to train your mind to go down that route uh, and and structure the way you you kind of go about it and if you're able to do that that just sets you up in a very good place uh, across a bunch of roles okay apart from that i think i don't think there are any specific certifications or uh, like like whatever pre work or something to be done uh, just chill and enjoy <laughs> we'll okay we'll into the grind yeah so uh, in case you know you guys have any questions that you would like to ask uh, akshay you can either email it to me or and i'll pass it on to him or you can find him on linkedin and you know you can ask him any questions uh, directly so yeah and uh, that's all we have time for today uh, thank you all the attendees and thank you akshay ayer for giving us such insights on management consulting and career in the thank you so much no worries thank you to you all the best